One of the major things that can impact the profitability of your farm as a fish farmer will be the presence of diseases. The earlier you're able to identify diseases in your farm, the better for you. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you signs of diseases you can easily identify as a fish farmer. I started fish farming as a result of therapy. This was a point in time in my life where I was extremely depressed and I was just looking for something to do with my life. By doing this, every single day, I go to my pond and I spend some time with my fish. After a while, I realized that this was really helping me and now I bet my business out of this. Therefore, as a fish farmer, it is very important that you pay attention to your fish. To be able to identify disease in your farm, there are two different components we would like to use. The first is observing from afar, and then the second will be that you have to take your fish from your tank. So let's look at observing from afar. Since I used to spend a lot of time around my tank, um, I tried to understand the regular behavior of my fish. That is to say that right from the point where I received the fish, I try to understand their lifestyle. So with respect to when I'm changing water, when I'm feeding them, when I'm sorting, or any other daily farm management practice that I perform in the farm. Therefore, to be able to identify a disease in your pond, you just need to get closer to the pond and just observe. Observe any fish hiding themselves, excessively aggressive or acting tired. By doing this, you are just trying to observe if they are getting closer to their mates or shying away from them and how are they interacting with other fish in the pond. Based on their reaction, you can start your analysis from that point. Generally, healthy catfish are more alert and very active. And in terms of how they move, you see that excitement all around them so if you are not seeing any of these things with respect to your entire fish or a particular fish in the pond then there could be a sign that there's something wrong with the fish secondly since feeding is very crucial in fish farming reason being is that fish do have an fcr that is feed conversion ratio of one is to one that is to say that if you are to feed your fish one kg of feed they are supposed to convert that into one kg of fish weight. Therefore, any changes with respect to how they feed would impact the produce at the end of the cycle. Therefore, you want to pay attention to how your fish respond to your feed. Normally, I do tell farmers, when you go to your pond, at least spend about 10 minutes doing your feeding processes. This will give you enough time to check whether your fish are stressed or they are diseased. If you realize any of these issues with respect to your feeding, the first thing you can do is to make sure you have quality feed. In quality feed, we are talking about making sure that you have procured a good feed, but then also from the process where you are taking the feed from your storeroom to giving the feed to your fish, you don't have any mold, any water, anything going in there that will reduce the quality of your fish. If the quality of your feed is reduced, then it would affect your fish. Then the second bit of it is to make sure you calculate appropriately the quantity of feed to give to your fish. So if you have a pond and you have 1,000 pieces of fish, you have to know at what size, what quantity of feed you need to give them from time to time. If you're able to do any of these things and you still have these problems still in your pond, then you have to check your water quality. If you change your water quality or you improve upon your water quality, then you may be able to reduce the stress around your fish. There's a general rule of thumb when it comes to fish farming. That is to say that when you realize that a fish is not healthy or in a pond, a greater number of the fish in the pond are not healthy, immediately you stop feeding. Because when you feed them, they may not eat the feed, and at the end of the day, it's going to deteriorate the water quality and the problem that is in your pond may multiply. Next thing you can look out for from your pond, 
by standing afar will be how they are breathing. I know you are wondering how are we going to observe that. Now, when you get closer to your pond, you observe if you find out that a lot of your fish or there's a particular fish that comes to the surface of the pond and it's just gasping for air and the fish barely goes down to the bottom, it may be a sign that that fish is having a, an infection around their gills. Or probably there could also be the chance of having lower dissolved oxygen levels in the pond. You know, the gills of your fish is um, a mechanism that they use to extract a lot of oxygen. And so if the DO levels in the pond is a bit low, then what you will have to do as a farmer will be that you have to increase the oxygen in the pond. The ways by which you can increase oxygen in the pond will be, sometimes you can just change the water and then by introducing new water, there will be some higher levels of oxygen in that particular um, new water that you are bringing into the pond. Or you can oxygenate. Oxygenation can be done using aerators or you can allow water flow from a higher level to a lower level of the pond. The more bubbles you see in the pond is oxygen being introduced in the pond. If after all of these things you still realize that the issue is still there, then it could be that there is a problem with respect to the gills or the respiratory tract of your fish. And that will mean that we'll have to look at how we have to take that fish out and then probably examine the gills to be able to see if maybe there is any growth or anything in there and then find a way to solve that particular problem. Maybe medication or any other remedies that we'll explain in other episodes. Fish can be very beautiful to watch, right? They are very swift, unpredictable in their movements, peacefully and very captivating to watch. Therefore, we say farmers should be able to get in tune with their fish and how they react from time to time. Having this information will help you, the farmer, to easily identify changes in their swimming patterns or any kind of abnormality. Therefore, irregular movement or swimming upside down, that is to say that they sometimes swim with their belly up, could be a sign of a swim bladder disease or a water quality issue. Again, as I have said initially, if you realize that the basis of this is a water quality issue, you just have to enhance on the water quality parameters. That is by either changing the water or putting up other things that we've discussed in previous episodes on how to maintain water quality to regain their balance. Again, while observing how they swim, if you realize that your fish keeps on scratching themselves at the bottom of your tank or other parts of the tank, it could be as a result of a skin irritation or an ectoparasite or an external parasite on the skin of the fish, therefore prompting them to scratch themselves on different, different surfaces available to them. So anytime you are observing your fish in a tank, just pay attention to all of these movements and everything in there. That is also to say that you can't get this information by just passing by your tank. No, you need to spend considerably good amount of time at the tank, then you'll be able to identify some of these signs as I have mentioned. Now we are going to go to the physical component that is going to be that you have to take your fish out of the pond and then examine them. That's very interesting for us to do. So before you are going to take your fish out of your pond, just make sure that you have water by, very clean water by, you've sterilized your scoop nets and everything you are going to use, you put that into the tank, try and get that fish with minimum stress as possible and then you go and now do the next couple of things I'm going to say. So now you have your fish with you. Probably you have your gloves on and you are just examining the fish. The first thing you are going to look out for is on the skin of the fish. You are looking out for sores, you are looking out for white patches or any damage on their body. So for sores, sometimes you can have sores around the gills, sores around the bellies, sores around the mouth. Sometimes you see the, if it's 
catfish, you see the barbells. The barbells are those things that looks like a, a whiskers. And you see them getting rotten or you see them having some uh, blood all around it. Another thing you like to look out for on the skin of the fish is to check if there is a change in color. So maybe on the skull of your fish, is there a change in color from the usual color to another color? Or the other part of your fish has a change in color? Now, if your fish is an albino fish, then that is different. But then if, let's say, it is not an albino fish and you realize that the color is changing, the reason why sometimes we see a color change with respect to our fish will be that catfish do not have scales on them. And so the way they can prevent bacteria and other things from being able to penetrate into their skin is a mucus or a slime that they always secrete. That is going to make it difficult for these parasites and what have you to be able to just easily penetrate into their skin. If your fish secretes a lot of these chemicals, at the end of the day, they are going to become very pale. So you just have to note that when you realize the fish is pale, take that fish out and take a look at some of these things. Then moving out from the skin of the fish, the next thing you like to look out for is the fins of your fish. So you know they have the fin at the back, fin all over them. You are trying to look for fins that are either fully damaged, torn or frayed. If you realize any of these things, sometimes as a result of uh, catfish being very aggressive, you may have some of their fins getting destroyed. But if you realize that it's becoming too much in your tank, it could also be a sign of a fin rot. And if you have a fin rot, then there's a different way you are going to solve all of these uh, issues in your tank. After examining the fin of your fish, you now want to look at the belly of the fish. Most of the time, you may have the belly of your fish becoming very swollen. Now, if you are overfeeding your fish, you may have the belly of your fish being swollen. Or if there is cannibalism, that is fish are swallowing other fish, you would have the belly of your fish becoming very big. But if you don't have these two issues in your pond, and you have the belly of your fish becoming very big, it could be a sign of an internal issue. And an example of this is dropsy. Dropsy is a buildup of liquid in the internal tissues of your fish. And this could be a sign of different, different kinds of diseases. And therefore you would want to also pay attention to some of these things. Sometimes it may not be filled with liquid. It could also be filled with air. And so you see the belly of the fish being overly bloated. If it's overly bloated, it could be a sign of a parasite, a bacterial infection, or a sign of a liver malfunction or dysfunction. Still with the fish in your hands, you want to examine the eyes of your fish. In examining the eyes of your fish, you want to check if there is a change in color or a growth around the eye of the fish or the eye itself looking as if it's trying to pop out. Any of these things you can take note as easy as possible as I've explained and try to solve the issue as fast as possible. Every farmer needs to add as part of their farm management practices an inspection for their fish. This could be done once a month or twice in a month. By doing this, you are just trying to spend some time, you are taking out your fish with your scoop net at random sampling and then you are examining your fish. If you are a farmer and you want to prevent diseases in your farm, just watch the next video.